Um, what have you guys seen in terms of actual rental rates broadly across the country? Have those held pace? Have they gone down up? What are you seeing there? Again, it depends on the market, but uh, what we have seen, because we measure rental rates in all the major markets, but we also measure it by um, the classification of the property. You know, A's being the top end, C's being uh, workforce, that type of thing, affordable. And so we, we slice and dice it a lot of different ways. So one of the things that we see, and I think people tend to want to just focus on the pandemic a lot, but you know, prior to the pandemic, we had an affordability issue, which we still have uh, associated with us. And it's basic economics of supply and demand as to what's driving the market uh, in terms of now, like it has been in the past that says, well, you know, are rents going up? Are they going down? Are they going up for certain segments? Now, the biggest demand that we see, especially in the Southeast markets like Orlando, things like that, we see immigration uh, is driving a lot of the market. Uh, down there, uh, especially the B's and C's workforce, uh, not so much the the top end. And so uh, to be able to say what's going on, you also, I mean, when you look at the aggregate, the national numbers, yeah, you're starting to see a, slice, a slight uh, increase, but that's because of time period dependency, which is a big statistical term that says I measure year over year. And when the bad months fall off and the new years come on, it looks like it's increasing, you know, from the math. And so what you have to be able to do is to look at that and, and look at how each market is being handled and dealt with def- differently. Certainly the Southwest markets, um, the Southeast markets look good uh, in terms of, uh, you know, overall rental rate increases, but a lot of the demand is in workforce and that's not where a lot of the supplies coming in being built. Uh, so you, again, you get into an economic disparity in terms of what people want, how much they want to pay, and where the demand is based off the supply. And now this this time dependency is an interesting one uh, in the sense that at any point throughout this year, when we look back a year ago, almost any number is going to look great, right, in terms of Absolutely. growth. Um, and, and we saw that with inflation. We're seeing that certainly with some of these, these rental statistics. Um, how much weight do you put in that? I mean, do you, do you have to... You have to look at, I guess, the period that you're comparing it to, and, and put kind of an asterisk on that. Or is there the way we? Of I'll a... tell you the yeah. The way we look at it, we look at the demand drivers. We're a database uh, driven type of, uh, so you have to dig a little bit deeper. You have to really look at the demographics, like uh, Hal Varian, who's he's a physicist by training, but he he's uh, marketing for Google. And one of the he said, if you're going to be able to really explain something, you have to look at the demographics. You have to look at the demand drivers that are occurring. It's almost like rents, uh, occupancy are almost symptomatic based off of what the real causation is occurring. So that's what we do. Uh, We we break it apart by the, uh, you know, the type of properties. We also, we call it context rating in our vernacular. We rate the properties, but we also rate the locations. Uh, We look at the uh, amount of supply. We look at the migration patterns, look at median income. Uh, to be able to see if there's gentrification, non-gentrification, does the median income support the type of market that's occurring in terms of the rentals that's being asked, what type of concessions are being offered, et cetera, et cetera. And so demand drivers, typically we would think employment, population growth, job growth, those Mm -hmm. kinds of things. Um, Are you looking at anything through a different lens in 2021 than you might have in you know 2019 or prior given what we just went through or or had those fundamental yes, states we are certainly yeah. certainly we're looking at lease rates uh we're looking at you know right now we've seen you know tip the the tip there's three distinct patterns in terms of spikes in rental rates you know it's the january feb uh the may june and then the september october those are typically your your heaviest frequency of of rental activity and one of the things that we want to look at is uh, what they call the gap. The gap is what is my existing rent? Okay, I'm getting ready. My existing lease is getting ready to expire. What's the new rate? So uh, lease renewals, uh, you know, what's the difference in terms of price? Also, what's the duration? Uh, we've, uh, we've seen too where some people are getting offered um, and this is again anecdotal, but uh, their action instead of a 12 month, they'll, t- they'll take a 15, 16, 17 uh, type month just to retain the existing rate. So those are all things that we look at right now. 
And we see those are some of the biggest uh, nuances uh, that's occurring going forward. 